recently been using this particular lapel mic. I donated uh, to the church by one of our folks and, and had the quiet gotten used to it. And, and we hadn't quite gotten down how long the battery lasts for it needs to be changed out. So kind of learning as we go. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8 says, Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, here am I, send me. <clears throat> Folks, I want to challenge you to be an Isaiah tonight Amen. and volunteer and ask the Lord to send you. Who is the Lord going to send? He's not going to send angels. He sends you with the gospel is what I'm talking about. Amen. Great commission was not given to the seraphim that we read about in our scripture reading. It was given to you. And the great commission as we call it is the mission of saved people. Uh, God's people and I'd like to encourage you seven days a week, but especially on our Saturday morning soul winning visitation time, to get involved in, in going out there and reaching uh, our Jerusalem, that is Jacksonville and surrounding areas, uh, reaching our Jerusalem for the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, with, with all that's going on this evening, I know most of the time I've, I've run things real late, and so we're going to do our best to, to try to go through this and, and to get you opportunity to get ministered to by the Word of God. Still have a business meeting and get you home too much, not too much later than midnight. Amen. <laughs> I just see if you was listening. The title of the message is, Bow With Me to Get Some V's. Get these V's. And we'll give you a few V's. Um, you may not have ever heard anybody getting V's before. Um, when you go to sleep, you go get a letter. What letter you get when you go to sleep? Z. We'll catch a few Z's. And what's the favorite letter of the pirate? R. R. No. Good, close. It is the C. The C. He loves the C. Okay. Um, we want to get some V's tonight. And the first one I want to point out to you in verse 1. And here the king as I died, I saw also the Lord. Sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. The first one I'll say tonight is we all need a vision. I hope you'll see this V uh, for us to have the victory that we need as uh, Isaiah I got it. And I understand that uh, God speaks primarily through his word today, not through visions. People oftentimes wonder if God might speak to them through a vision. I've been saved for a long time. God's never spoken to me through a vision. Amen. But he has spoken to me many times through his word and his word uh, dealing with my conscience. I want you to know if you'll fill yourself with the word of God, it is very close, very similar to being filled with the spirit of God. Because Jesus said the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So if you want to hear from God, the best way to do it is to get into the Word of God. But thinking about a vision, we really do need a vision. Uh, he said, I saw also the Lord. And you know what? To be concerned about souls, you need to see some things that if God don't help you, you won't really think about them. One of them is heaven. I mean, you're more liable to think about traffic than you are heaven. And if you're not careful, if you don't think about traffic, you may see heaven real quick. <laughs> but heaven is a pure place. It's a perfect place. It's a preserved place. It's a promised place. Somebody said, you know, Jesus said, I go and prepare a place for you. It's a prepared place for a prepared people. That is, born again people. Saved people. Now, you don't get saved, you don't get to heaven by reforming your life. Amen. Okay? You don't get to heaven by requesting it. This is one gift you do not have to ask for. Right. As a general rule, you don't have to ask for a gift. It's a general rule. Somebody presents a gift to you, and all you have to do is receive it. The way you receive this gift is by faith. The gift is presented by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lets you know that you're a lost person going to hell. Right. He reproves you of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Right. And then he makes it known to your heart that Christ died for our sins. He paid the penalty so you don't have to worry about that judgment thing. 
Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried. He rose again the third day according to the scriptures. If you'll trust him as your Savior, that is, put your faith in what he did for you on the cross of Calvary instead of your resolution, instead of your intentions to one day give yourself to God. All the time I hear people give testimonies or give invitations and they say, dedicate your life to God, give your life to God, give your heart to God. And folks, nobody in the Bible got saved by giving anything to God. That's right. Now, the way you get saved is by trusting Jesus Christ, and at that point, God gives you everlasting life. Amen. For by grace you are saved through faith. Amen. Okay? Ephesians 2 8. That not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works. Let me imagine both. That verse tells you how you get the gift. Right. Look at it one more time. Ephesians 2 8. For by grace you are saved through faith, yeah. and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. The gift of God is mentioned in the context of faith. Only people in the Bible who get saved get saved by faith. If you ever get saved, you get saved by grace through faith. Amen. When the Bible, um, almost never in the Bible, you find somebody told to receive Christ. Nobody's ever told to receive Christ. But those who receive Christ, receive Christ by believing on his name. I received Christ in uh, February of 1968. And the way that I received Christ is I believed on his name. John 1.12 says, but as many as received him, to them gave me power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So if you want to, if you want to go to heaven, my friend, you have to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now you say, people, if you want to influence other people to go to heaven, we need to have a vision of it. And uh, there's different ways you can do it, but, but you can think about it. You can think about it. Read the Revel book of Revelation. Uh, there's not a whole lot in the Bible talks, uh, where it describes heaven. I guarantee it's going to be glorious. Uh, the I think it was Charles Gabriel wrote that song that we sang just a little while ago. Oh, that will be glory for me. Amen. I'm telling you, it's going to be more wonderful than you and I could describe. It's going to be more wonderful than you and I could imagine. If I tell you something else we need, we need a vision of hell as well. Right. Heaven is real and hell is real. Positively, it's wonderful to be going to heaven. Yeah. Negatively, it's so wonderful to not have to go to hell. Amen. Amen. We all deserve it. We all deserve hell. Hell's a dark place, dreadful place, a discouraging place, a dismal place. It's a definite place for a doom to people. Right. Just like heaven's a prepared place for prepared people. Our lost friends and our lost loved ones, our lost co-workers, will one day spend eternity in hell right. if we don't win them to Christ. We don't get them the gospel. Along that line, let me say, will you ask God to give you this deed, a vision? Number one, a vision of heaven. Number two, a vision of hell. Number three, a vision of the heathen. A vision of the heathen. Who's the heathen? The grocer. I'm not talking about specifically Sister Karen, who's right here near me. <laughs> the waitress. Amen. People you saw today. Right. The gas station worker. The postman. Your boss. Amen. Your co-worker. Your employee, right. the janitor where you work, that person is a precious soul. And if he's unsaved, he's just as heathen as anybody in any darkest place of the world that nobody's hardly ever been to and taught people how to read or write. Yeah. Tell you some, where you can find some other heathen, some of you, your parents, yeah. your children, right. your brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters. Your old aunt, dear Aunt Holden, so whoever she is, dear Aunt Susie or whoever. You know who the heathen are? The city politicians. Right. The men on the garbage truck that come by your house. The policemen. Wealthy people. Poor people. Middle class people. They're all heathen if they don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. They're all in the same boat. Doesn't matter if they live on uh, a, a, a wealthy side of town or a poor side of town. They're all important to Jesus, and he died for every last one of them. Amen. And they're all, you know what the boat they're in? They're in the sin boat. They're all in the same boat. They're in the sin boat. And they're all sinners. We need to go with them with the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, but it's the power of God to save everyone that believeth, and that includes rich people in Jacksonville. That includes poor people in Jacksonville. That includes people of any race. That includes people of any language that happen to be in Jacksonville. Let's go after them. Let's go after them. Go out of town, go after them there. But you live in Jacksonville, let's go after them. And then fourth, let me say we need a vision of him. We need a vision of heaven. We need a vision of hell. We need a vision of the heathen. We need a vision of him. 
He said, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. Let's witness for him. I have a message from the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. It is only that you look and live. Amen. Let's witness of him. I don't preach the Baptist church. I preach Christ. Right. Amen. 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 Now, if you get saved, I'll try to make you a Baptist. <laughs> Amen. I don't preach the Baptist church. I preach Christ. Amen. Christ crucified. That's right. Amen. Amen. Let's witness to him. Let's bring people to him. Let's depend on him. Let's keep looking to him. And he's the author of every blessing. Number two, besides needing a vision, we need a view of ourselves. If you look there at verse 5, that's a pretty miserable prophet right there. And verse 5, I, does everybody know the, the, uh, the name of, of uh, Isaiah's mule? Come on. You got it. Isn't it? Isaiah 6 5. Woe is me. That's all. Isaiah 6 5. Then said I. Some of you ride together. You'll have to ride back with somebody. Finally start laughing when they get in the car. Then said I. Woe is me, for I am undone. Because I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the king the Lord of hosts. I didn't talk about this too much in the first point, but you know what? We need to look at ourselves. We looked at the Lord, we looked at heaven, we looked at hell, we looked at the heathen, and we looked at him. But you know what? In this second thought, is getting a V. The first one's a vision, the second's a view of ourselves. We need to view ourselves. In verse 5, uh, Isaiah was overcome with iniquity. He said, I am undone. I am a man of unclean lips. I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. I want you to know, folks, we save people or what we are by the grace of God. Amen. Amen. Some of you saved people have had things come out your lips since you've been saved. They're all not to come out of the lips of a saved person. Yeah. We don't deserve to carry the pure message of salvation, but God allows us to. Amen. We'll be better witnesses of that salvation if you and I will sanctify and purify ourselves. And that's going to happen by the Word of God, not without it. Amen. We'll be better witnesses if we have a good testimony in this world. Y'all know that I use the verse uh, from time to time, Matthew 5, 16. Amen. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. People talk about you. People look at you. Yeah. They're looking at everybody. They may not concentrate on everybody. They're looking at everybody. I have been a great soul winner in my life. I've not led a number of people in the Lord. And you've got a responsibility, even if you're not actually in the process of witnessing to somebody, to live in such a way uh, that people will not see anything that would point them away from God. Amen. Uh, right. yeah. Ms. O'Neill's in the hospital. And without me saying it, and I've given out some tracts and doesn't mean, but without me saying, um, just about everybody on that floor knows that it's a preacher's wife right. in, that, in that one room there. Mm -hmm. And and you know why? <clears throat> Somebody found out and word got around. Yeah. I'm, saying, I'm saying people talk about you without you knowing. Right. I want you to have a, a vocal witness. Okay, I really do. I want you to tell people. But people will find out and they'll be looking at you right. without you knowing. Maybe Jonah thought that nobody knew about him. I'm telling you, they're watching you. They told Jonah, who's your God? Don't you have a God? Pray. Everybody else is praying. Won't you pray? Witnessing to the man who needed to be the witness. We need a correct view of our iniquity. We need a correct view of our insufficiency. Yes, we labor. Yes, we train. Yes, we memorize verses. Uh, yes, we go out and knock on doors. But without Jesus, you can do nothing. Amen. Amen. That's right. It's not by might nor by power, but by God's Spirit, Zechariah 4, 6 says. Amen. It's not by wit. It's not by wisdom. It's not by winsome personality. It's by Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Third, we need another B. Will you try to get some B's with me? First B is, is vision. The first the second B is a view of ourselves. The third B is a victory from God. He was undone. But then, verse 6 says, flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live 
cold. I want you to listen to me. I want to make you a picture of this of what, how you and I can have a picture today. One of the seraphims flew to him. He had a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar, and he laid it upon my mouth. Visible from out of space, live coal, put it on the prophet's mouth, and said, Lo, this has touched thy lips. Thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sin is purged. Overcome in the previous verse with his own worthlessness and his own sin, in verses 6 and 7, Isaiah reminds us New Testament Christians how that we can go out with victorious witnessing, victorious soul winning. We don't have to, we may not feel like that we're up to the task. We may be afraid. We don't feel worthy. But Isaiah got the victory and you can get the victory too. Join us this Saturday morning as we go knock on doors. Let me give you a little picture here of how he got victory. Uh, first of all, there was a flying representative. Now I'm talking about this flying seraphim. This flying seraphim was sent to Isaiah, and just like that happened, in Acts chapter 2, the Holy Ghost was sent from heaven. And Jesus said that when that visitor came, he said, ye shall be witnesses unto me. He said that, that, the, that when the Holy Ghost comes, he said that ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Folks, we need to be seeking to be filled with the Spirit of God. Flying represented. The second thing that you see in this Isaiah 6 was a fiery coal. A fiery coal was placed on his lips, and it cleansed him from all of his iniquity. You know what the Bible is like? The Bible is like a fiery coal. This book is on fire. Amen. Jeremiah was uh, about to quit the ministry. He was tired of being rejected. Nobody would listen. And uh, the Lord uh, spoke to him and stirred him up. And, uh, and Jeremiah put it this way. He said, I, I've had it. I've quit. He said, I'm not going to speak anymore in his name. He said, but his word yeah, was like a fire in my bones. Amen. And he said, I could not stay. Another place in the book of Jeremiah the Bible says, It's not my word as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. God will give us the victory, and if he gives you the victory, uh, you're going to get it from a fiery coal sent by the Holy Ghost, that representative uh, from heaven. And when you get a hold of the word of God, it will give you the courage to not just talk about your vacation, not just talk about your job, not just talk about your children, but you get the courage and the power to talk about Jesus. Amen. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. Spirit-filled people don't talk about the Spirit. Spirit-filled people talk about Jesus. Yes, sir. Amen. Jesus said when he's come, he'll not testify of himself. He'll testify of me. One of the great tasks of the Holy Spirit in this world today is to magnify Jesus Christ. Yeah. And then he got forgiveness. The Word of God brings cleansing. The Word of God brings forgiveness. You know what? Saved people need forgiveness after they've been forgiven for going to hell. You need to be forgiven for fellowship. You need to be forgiven of your stuff that you've done since you've been saved and things that have knocked you out of getting close to God like you should. Do you know that saved people are not all as close to God as they should? Do you know not all saved people feel saved? Amen. Now, I don't emphasize feelings too much because there's nothing in the Bible you know, about you, you know, feeling this and feeling that. That's kind of one of the marks of people in the South. You ever shook hands with a fellow, you Chicago person from the South, and first thing he says to you, how you feeling? <laughs> oh, yeah. How you feeling? I'm feeling fine. How you feeling? <laughs> and, uh, oh, I'm feeling good. People ask me how I'm doing. I said, I'm fine as frog's hair split three ways. Amen. And, uh, and we're all interested in feeling. But I'm interested in what the Word of God says. Amen. And if you'll get the Word of God in your heart like a fire, uh, you won't have to feel. You'll go out and witness for Jesus Christ. Amen. Last thing I'll mention to you, another B we need, is we need, we need a vision. We need a few of ourselves. Uh, we need victory from the Lord, from God. And 4, verse 8. Look at verse 8. 
We need a, we need to volunteer. Amen. Number four, if this church is going to be a soul winning church, we need to volunteer to go. Amen. Amen. The voice of the Lord said, "Whom shall I send, and who will go for us?" Then said, "I hear, am I send me?" Amen. In closing, the problem was expressed: Whom shall I send? It was expressed: Who will go for us? Do you know God has the same problem today? Who's going to go to Jacksonville? Well, the Jehovah's Witnesses are Jehovah's false witnesses are going with their false gospel. That's right. Who will go for the Lord? Mm He's -hmm. not sending angels. You know what? You need to volunteer. Mm -hmm. so, Lord, send me. The problem is not so much that the field is hard. The problem is there's just not enough workers to go out into the field. Jesus said, the harvest truly is plenteous, but what was sh they short of? But the laborers are few. Pray therefore the Lord of the harvest that he'll send forth laborers into his heart. Promise expressed. Who's going to go? Folks, if everybody, if, if everybody did like you do on Saturday soul winning visitation, how many would we have? Who will go? Then the presentation was made. Isaiah presented himself. He doesn't look at himself and he didn't see much. He said, I'm undone. I'm a man of unclean lips. I don't have any right to speak for God. I dwell in the midst of, an un of people of unclean lips. But he said, here am I. Yeah. Isaiah answered God's call and asked for God's commission. He said, dear Lord, send me. Amen. May God give us people in this congregation who will ask the Lord to send you. Amen. Send you. Send you as a courageous witness for Jesus Christ. Amen. Now the problem was, the program was given in verse 9 where the Lord said to Isaiah, go. You just go and tell him. And that doesn't match our uh, commission co uh, completely if you go down uh, through those couple of verses. But it sure is enough for you and me to get a blessing in, in New Testament times from this Old Testament passage. He said, I'm going to send you. Go. Go and tell him. Go and tell him. Go and tell him. How long? Just keep telling him. Keep telling him. Keep telling him as long as there's people. There's sinners out there. Go and tell him, my friend. Who will the Lord send those who volunteer? That's the answer to the question. And so the question to you is, if you're saved, will you volunteer tonight? Now, the Lord may send you like I've read off our missionaries. You can see them on your financial statement. We'll pass those out in a minute. Um, they answer the call. You can pray for them. Maybe there's somebody even in this congregation that God wants to send out to a foreign field. But if he doesn't, I guarantee you he wants, you to, send, he wants to send you out into this field of Jacksonville, Florida. Amen. Would you volunteer? Let's stand together, heads bowed.